Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth, a homestyle Bible study where we present God's Word from God's perspective and not man's. We study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. But we shun profane and vain babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness which also things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now these references are found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to ask you a simple question before we get started here. Do you really believe God when you read his word as to what he says, please answer this to God in your heart only. Today, we're going to look at when mankind plays the race card, they are playing the devil's hand. Now, one can look back, and we're going to look at this from God's perspective now, and definitely not man's, because man is following Satan on this, and you know where that's going. And we will look at that later on. One might say, and I've even heard theologians, experts, uh, teach that God was a segregationist. They have to put a title to something to explain why he chose the Jew and pulled them out to make a people of his own. And he called the rest of the people Gentiles. In the beginning of the Bible, there was no race of people. There was people that came from different areas is what they were considered. There wasn't a race of color. They were from this place or they were from that place or that's how they were recognized when they would come together. And then in chapter 12 of Genesis, God pulls Abram out of the picture and creates the Jewish people, a race of people that is going to be his own. The rest of the world was cons cons not considered, but consisted of Gentiles. So you had Jew and Gentile. And the Jews became a nation of people, the Israelites, when they were down in Egypt under bondage. And then the Lord pulled them out. But he did a lot of different things with the nation of Israel so that they would have <clears throat> proof to the whole world that these were a special set-aside people. Not a prejudiced people, ladies and gentlemen. That's not in God's realm of thinking. This is a called out, chosen people. Big difference. And he did so many things when they were in Egypt, to show the people of the world, especially Egypt, who these people really were. You know, he did ten different things, nine plagues and a sign to Egypt before they realized who they're dealing with, that God is a sovereign God, he's a just God, and he knows what he is doing, and he has every right to do what it is he does, even though people today call him a segregationist. He did things such as the first thing was a sign to turn the rod of Moses into a snake. But then the people of his, his own priesthood and the pharaohs did the same thing with the rod. But then the Lord brought on nine plagues, the plagues of the frogs, the plagues of uh, lice, the plagues of cattle, the plagues of boils, the plagues of hail, the plagues of locusts, and the plagues of darkness, and finally, the death of the firstborn. And eight of these plagues were plagues from the gods that these Pharaoh and Egypt worshipped. Very interesting he would do this kind of thing. And then in Exodus chapter 19, if you take your Bibles and open up to Exodus chapter 19, and let's look at verses 
4 through 6. Exodus 19, verses 4 through 6. The Lord God tells his people through Moses. This is what he's telling Moses to tell the people of Israel. Verse 4, you have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you up unto myself. And this is by choice from the sovereign God. Verse 5, now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, that ye shall be a particular people, treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Then, of course, Moses went on ahead and did that. There's also other places where he did some astounding things that <clears throat> to prove to the, uh, the world that the Jews were his chosen people. Not for any other reason but to serve him. And he would protect them. There is a, uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, the fall of Jericho was a city with a great wall. And God told his people, if you go around it each day seven times for six days, then on the seventh day, you go around it seven times and blow the horns, the walls would fall. And you can read about this in chapter 6 from verse 1 through verse 4. And that's exactly what happened. Then you have in 1 Samuel, and this is in chapter 17, where you can read about King David before he became king, that he slew the giant Goliath by having the faith in God. Because he knew who his God was. He knew he was a chosen person of God. And God again used this to show the people of the world what he says goes. And the reason I'm showing you all these Old Testament dealings is there's a reason for it when we come on later to the end of the study. But in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 you can read about David slaying, slewing the great giant Goliath against all odds. Then you can read about Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 where he had a contest with all the priests of Jezebel when they built an altar, each one, <clears throat> a specific way and called upon their gods to come down and consume it. And it never happened. And Elijah called down once from his god of Israel and it consumed the altar. And he had all these priests killed. Not because of race, but because of God's will. The sovereign God is con in control. Even my great God and Savior Jesus Christ, when he came on this earth and started his ministry, which was the gospel of the kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, People could look at him and call him a racist if they really wanted to, or a segregationist, because of what he did. His whole ministry and message was the gospel of the kingdom to the nation of Israel so that the rest of the world could be brought to God through the nation of Israel once Israel accepted him as their Messiah. And there's very several different places you can look in the book of Matthew, for example, chapter 10, verses 5. He says this, the Lord Jesus Christ now, he says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, or into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Oh, he's a racist. Keep that in mind. Verse 6, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and go ye preaching, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8, Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. That's a pretty good uh, indication of who he was preaching to, wasn't it? The, Gen the uh, Israelites, not the Gentiles. There's another example in Matthew chapter 15 where the Canaanite woman's faith or the Syrophoenician woman 
where she begged him to come and heal her, his daughter, her daughter, because she was vexed with the devil. And Jesus answered her and said this in chapter 15 of verse 23, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And then to verse 24, Jesus says, But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let me repeat that. Verse 24, he says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What do you think today's people in modern Christianity, and even people that aren't in Christianity would think of Jesus of Nazareth? When he do something like this. What does that make him out to be? Now let's look at another famous. Convincing. Verse of scripture. In Romans chapter 15. Paul writes about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who went to the cross. He says in verse 8 of chapter 15 of Romans. He says. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister. Of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. The circ circumcision, ladies and gentlemen, were the Jews, a scientist, keep them separate from the rest of the world. Promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Pretty amazing, isn't it? When you look back at how God dealt with people with different areas of the world where mankind has brought in the in, in, uh, race of people. The race of people, that's what man's word. In God's time, when he dealt with people as nations of this world and was active with the nation of Israel, there was nations he dealt with. Nations of people. There were the Jews and the Gentiles. That's it. Nothing else. When Jesus came on this earth, for his earthly ministry, he dealt with the nation of Israel, the Israelites, the Jew, and occasionally a few Gentiles. That's it. And there were no others. Isn't that interesting? Then along comes man in his finite mind, along with somebody hiding in the wings. Old Satan. He's going to put something that's pretty damaging in the minds of man. And he will make these people so consumed with it, ladies and gentlemen, that they cannot eat, they cannot sleep, they cannot drink, they cannot function without thinking about race first and foremost. This is so prevalent in modern Christianity today and in the world and if you notice, and you really look around, it's making a comeback. Ladies and gentlemen, it has to do to se several variances. The very first is sin. When sin entered the world, and death by sin, because death passed on to all men, for all had sinned. Sin brought in the race card. Sin brought in the race that one is different than another. Sin brought in the covetousness that one race covetous after something another race has. Sin brought in the fact to think that one race is better than another one. The bottom line is sin. And who brought sin into the world? It entered through Adam, but Satan was responsible for bringing sin into the world. And he uses it every chance he gets. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to modern Christian churches today. Denominationalisms. They're segregated. There's very few that aren't. Why? People do not like to talk about race. My goodness, just look around today. You have to be so politically correct. You can't say anything about anybody. I stand before you as God is my witness and my Lord and great God and Savior Jesus Christ to tell you that people who use the race card are playing the devil's hand because it is totally based on ignorance. Oh, these people, whether they're Christians or not, think they're highly educated. 
They know what's going on. They know race and play the card when they see it. They know when somebody is racist right away. It can be the littlest thing that you don't even think about. But see, these people are honed in. It's in, I can't even think of the word, ingrained in them. It's, they're so controlled by it, they can't think of anything else. They look for it, ladies and gentlemen. And I've seen this and I've experienced this on both sides. And it's a shame because it's due to ignorance. Totally due to ignorance. They think they know what they're doing and what they're talking about. They don't have the slightest idea. Because in the end, there is not going to be any race of people. Did you know that? You see, God says with him there's no respect to persons. That means, ladies and gentlemen, he don't care if you're black and white, red, green, purple, yellow, male or female. You do wrong in his eyes, you're going to be punished for it. You do good in his eyes, you'll be rewarded for it. And you can have salvation if you so desire it. Back then in the Old Testament, God showed his ability to separate and to treat different ones for different reasons. And he had good reasons. The Gentiles were full of idolatry, false gods. They will refuse to come to the Lord God and worship him, even though he had created them. And he knew that. The only hope for man's salvation was to bring out a people of his name that he could call his, the Jew. And yet they failed him. It was all because of sin. It's because of the ignorance of mankind, ladies and gentlemen. Ignorance of the word of God and nothing else. You may think you don't need to put the word of God into this equation. Oh, I got news for you. You go on it by your own. Just look at the last study we did. There is a way which seems right unto the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, and that's exactly where you're going to end up. People today that are prejudiced, people today that think they're better than others and they think they're getting a raw deal or they're getting too much of this and too much of that and the other ones are being treated different because of this or that, of the history, whatever the case may be, are heading to the lake of fire if they do not stop. They're playing the race card which is of the devil's hand. And he's behind it, pushing it 100%, because that can separate everybody, ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to think about it. In today's modern political field, that's what they're pushing for. People are pushing for a race war, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine? You have to be so politically correct, you can't even take a stand. Well, you have to take a stand, ladies and gentlemen. Your very soul depends on it. What stand are you going to take? Are you going to take the stand where I know what's best? I'm smart enough to make it up, figure it out for myself. For I see, I can plainly see the prejudice around me. I'm not blind. I'm not stupid. What kind of a fool do you take me for? What you're seeing is programmed. What you're seeing is meant to be seen. It's a ploy. From Satan's anomic helpers, ladies and gentlemen. He's behind all this. Jesus Christ died for the sins of all mankind. Does that mean he was prejudiced? What do you think? He died for all. Black, white, green, yellow, blue, purple, red. Keep coming up with colors. I don't care how many colors you come up with. He died for all. Because all needed to be died for, because all are dead. You play the race card. You're playing the devil's hand. You're dead. You know why? Because you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you might think you do. You might go to a church. You might go to a black church. You might go to a white church. You might go to a yellow church. You might go to a red church. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I am not politically correct, and I don't have to be. I'm giving you the word of God from God's perspective. Jesus Christ died for all. That means he died for everybody. You can throw the race card right out the window because it does not exist in the eyes of God today. Did you know that? Because you didn't know that makes you ignorant of the fact because you call everybody else a racist and you're the biggest racist of them all because you're ignorant of the word of God. 
Everybody that has pulls the race card and plays the devil's hand is ignorant of the Word of God. They don't think God's Word means anything. It doesn't come into the picture. Really. What if Jesus Christ said, I'm just going to die for the Jew? I'm just going to die for the Arab. I'm just going to die for the Africans, the blacks, the reds only, the whites. What kind of a God would that be? The God of all people? Yeah. That's what Satan wants you to believe. And in fact, it's gotten so bad that there is in the black community a black Jesus. Come on. You might even say in, in, in Caucasian, in the white race, there's the white Jesus. Come on. We don't even know what Jesus looked like. That's man and Satan behind all that, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a true believer, if you are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross, where you believe with faith and faith alone on the finished work of the cross, you cannot be prejudiced. You cannot play the race card. You will not play the devil's hand because it doesn't exist. It never did in the body of Christ. Satan doesn't want you to know that, see? Satan doesn't want you to know that the body of Christ, as we taught so many times before, is without spot and without wrinkle and had no influence of Satan at all because it was kept a secret until it was revealed. Once it was revealed, it was already finished. No prejudices allowed. Yet look at today. Everybody has a say in prejudice. Play the race card. When in doubt, look for it. Present it. That justifies your actions, doesn't it? Well, let me caution you, ladies and gentlemen. You that play the race card and you that play the devil's hand, don't you know where you're going to end up? You don't have Jesus Christ in your life. There's no way you can have Jesus Christ in your life and claim to be a racist or, or see and fight for racism, ladies and gentlemen. No way. If you are a true Christian, a true saved Christian, in the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, which is found in the revelation of the mystery in the gospel of Paul from Romans to Philemon. You won't be prejudiced. It doesn't exist. And you won't go around promoting and you won't go around defending your own race when you see an injustice because black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter, la da 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 da, yada, yada, yada. What a bunch of trash talk coming from Satan. And you fall for it lock, stock, and barrel. And you might sit there and tell me, well, I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I know what God's talking about. I know what God says on the issue. Because he says something, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm going to tell you. And like I asked you before, do you really believe God when you read his word as to what he says? Do you? then if you do, there's no way you're going to be a racist, ladies and gentlemen. You can't be. Because it doesn't exist in the eyes of God today. Just open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, please. Right before Ephesians. Right after 2 Corinthians. You're going to find something very interesting. This is what he says about us today, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 27 of chapter 3 of Galatians. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Here it is, verse 28. I'll read it to you slowly. There is neither Jew nor Jew Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For we are all one. In Christ Jesus. Let me put it in terms where you might be able to understand it because you're not saved. And you're just being pompous that you think you know what you're talking about when you talk about the race card playing in the devil's hand. Let me read it to you this way. There is neither whites, there's neither blacks, there's neither yellows, there's neither reds, there's neither Jew, there's neither Creek. There's nobody that is bound, bond, nobody that's in prison, or nobody that is free. 
There's no difference. There's no difference in the male or in the female. We're all one in Christ Jesus. What part of this verse don't you see? You refuse to believe. If you refuse to believe God's word, you're, you're lost. The gospel is hid from you because you were under the spell of Satan. Don't take my word for it, please. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Verse 3 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, ladies and gentlemen, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now let me give you the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you, that can bring you out of this race problem without becoming a racist. To forget about that, to live for one another as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Not as a black and a white and a red and a green and a yellow and a blue and a purple. Come on. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you and which you have received and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory that which I have preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, you believe that gospel? That is the gospel that's going to save you and bring you out of it being a racist. You know, there's a, a good little verse here in uh, Colossians, the book of Colossians, which is right after Ephesians, and just before 1 Thessalonians. It's in chapter 3. It says, verse 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. Verse 24, Knowing that the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it is, verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, for there is no respect of persons with God. Do you believe that? Not now. There's an, this is grace, ladies and gentlemen. Grace is extended to everybody, not to a certain race of people like the gospel of the kingdom was to the Jew. And then the Jews could turn around and bring it on to us Gentiles. That was a prophetic plan. That's the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the grace of God, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. Exposed first in uh, chapter 16 of Romans, chapter uh, 16, verse 25 and 26, and all the way through Romans through Philemon. It's one at a time. Come to God. You come to God through Jesus Christ by faith and faith alone. Not based on anything you do, and not based on who you are, what color you are, what ethnic group you are, or what's been done to you, has nothing to do with that, ladies and gentlemen. That is of the world, because that is of covetousness, that is of sin, and that is of ignorance. And believe you me, man has brought that to the pinnacle. And because of Satan is behind it, and it's all due to the ignorance, although man thinks he knows what the hell he's talking about. He has no idea. Because let me caution you, you racist people out there that spend your whole life looking for race problems, looking and bringing it out in the forefront and fighting for justice, making yourself known because you're bringing out everybody's a racist. Be careful. You may end up in the lake of fire and you may end up right next to the very one you hated the worst because they hated you just as bad as you hated them based on race. You will be reminded of that every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, and every year for eternity. You will not be able to escape it. Yet you spent your whole life over here fighting for the injustice of racism. You want the equality, do you, because you deserve something. You deserve what everybody else gets, and everybody else gets what you deserve. That'll never happen with mankind at the helm, ladies and gentlemen. Look around, is it happening right now? 
Are you satisfied with everything you see? If you're not saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you do not look at it from God's perspective and stop looking at it and stop acting like it and stop living it from man's perspective, you will understand there's no such thing as a race. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And the oneness in Christ Jesus creates a unity that only the sovereign God can create. You want to be a part of the unity of Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior that died for all of us on the cross? All you have to do is simply believe by faith and faith alone. I gave you the gospel. I showed you with God there's no respect of persons. Not now. There's no difference. You have a choice to make. You can choose to believe what was shown to you. Don't believe the one that presented it to you. I don't want anybody to believe what it is I believe. I want them to believe God. And I presented you with God's word as to what he says about race. Those that play the card of race play the devil's hand. You better shuffle your deck, ladies and gentlemen. And you better take a hard look at it. Because there's no such thing as turning back. Once it's over, it's over. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your listening. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we'd love to hear from you. We're the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth. We're at 285 Industrial Avenue, apartment number 7, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. Again, the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth, 285 Industrial Avenue, apartment number 7, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. Again, this is Robert Holler, thanking you. Until next time.